the Buddha. Namo Buddhasa. Homage to the fully enlightened one. And let's just get right into the text and continue on. And so the last time we were studying this text, or it's actually a talk given by the Venerable Mahasi Sayada. And the last time we just read a long, long chapter on some on on the outline of some of the basic exercises. And I think I got cut off uh, the last time, yeah. So I just got cut off. Um, so I had to hurry a little bit uh, through the last part of the last video. So I hope today that we won't get cut off. I might have to make a two-part video then. But, um... But yeah, continuing on today with the chapter called Other Exercises. And here we go. And I am, the reason I'm putting up my hands like this is so that it actually kind of can help uh, to keep focus. And it's like uh, guarding and watching your hands so you don't like play around with them and make funny things and carried away with all kinds of different things you can do with your hands right and so the reason for me putting up my hands like this is because usually when I listen to the words of the Buddha I will always try to put my hands up like this and be very attentive unless I'm meditating during a talk in which case I would be sitting like this Saying to myself, hearing, hearing, as the sound touches the ear. But also, when I'm reading aloud something like this talk, which I haven't read before or heard before, it is like um, when you listen to the Dhamma, you put up your hands like this. And so when I read aloud, it's actually also me listening to myself and, of course, the subject matter which is this talk so it is me as much me listening to this talk as it is um, me reading it aloud for you to listen to okay and so I think that was a long enough intro almost six minutes like so six minutes six minutes <laughs> and just five seconds and we did the six minutes and then we can start there we go other exercises. Walking. It is therefore to be emphasized that the act of pulling up the body to be standing to the standing posture should be carried out slowly. On coming to an erect position, a note should be made as standing, standing, if one happens to look around, a note should be made as looking, seeing, and on walking each step should be noted as right step, left step, or walking, walking. We usually use stepping right, stepping left, and so Continuing on, at each step, attention should be fixed on the sole of the foot as it moves from the point of lifting the leg to the point of placing it down. While walking in quick, while walking in quick steps or taking a long walk, a note on the section of each step as right step, left step, or walking, walking will do. In the case of walking slowly, each step may be divided into three sections, lifting, moving, oh, moving forward, and placing down. In the beginning of the exercise, a note should be made of the two parts of each step as lifting, 
by fixing the attention on the upward movement of the foot from the beginning to the end, and as placing by fixing on the downward movement from beginning to the end, and thus the exercise which starts the first step by noting as lifting, placing, now ends. Normally, when the foot is put down and is being noted as placing, the other legs begin lifting to begin the next step. This should, this should not be allowed to happen. The next step should begin only after the first step has been completed, such as lifting, placing for the first step and lifting, placing for the second step. After two or three days, this exercise will be easy. And then the meditator should carry out the exercise of noting each step in three sections as lifting, moving, placing. And for, for the present, a meditator should start the exercise by noting as right step, or as we do, we say stepping right. Stepping left or walking, walking, while walking quickly and by noting as lifting, placing, lifting, moving, placing, while walking slowly. Sitting, while one is walking. One may feel the desire to sit down. One should then make a note as wanting. If one then happens to look up, note it as looking and seeing and looking and seeing. On going to the seat as lifting, placing, on stopping as stopping, stopping. On turning around to sit down, turning, turning. When one feels a desire to sit, note it as wanting, wanting. In the act of sitting there, there occur in the body heaviness and also downward pull. Attention should be fixed on these factors and a note made as sitting, sitting, sitting. After having sat down, there will be movements of bringing the hands and legs into position. They should be noted as moving, bending, stretching and so forth. If there is nothing to do and if one is sitting quietly, one should then revert to the usual exercise of noting as rising, falling. So that was walking uh, and sitting, and now we go to lying down. Oh. In the course of contemplation, one feels painful or tired or hot. One should make a note of these and then revert to the usual exercise of noting rising and falling. If one feels sleepy, one should make a note of it as sleepy, sleepy, and proceed with the noting of all acts in preparation to lie down. Note the bringing into position of the hands and legs as raising, pre uh, pressing, moving, supporting. When the body sways as swaying, 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 and when the legs stretch as stretching, 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 and when the body drops and lies flat, lying, lying, lying. This is a great way to meditate because can do this anywhere at 
any time that you are able. These trifling acts in lying down are also important and they should not be neglected. There is every possibility of attaining enlightenment during this short time. On the full development of concentration and knowledge, enlightenment is attainable during the present moment of bending or stretching. In this, in this way, the venerable Ananda attained arahatship at the very moment of lying down. So if, let me just try and read this and then maybe I can just talk a little bit how Ananda was enlightened. It's an awesome story. So continuing on with the text here. Um, about the beginning of the fourth month, oh, maybe we're going to get to hear it now from the Venerable Mahasi Sayadaw. Okay, here we go. About the beginning of the fourth month, uh, after the Buddha's complete passing away to Parinibbana, arrangements were made to hold the first council of bhikkhus to collectively classify, examine, confirm, and recite all the teachings of the Buddha. At that time, 500 bhikkhus were chosen, were chosen for this work. Of these bhikkhus, 499 were arahats, while the venerable Ananda was a suttapana, a stream enterer. In order to attend the council as an arahat, on the same level with the others, he made his utmost effort to carry on with his meditation on the day prior to the opening of the council. Um, that was on the 4th, of the waning moon of the month of Sawana, August. Um, he proceeded with mindfulness of the body and continued his walking meditation throughout the night. It might have been in the same manner as noting stepping right, stepping left, or walking walking and he was thus occupied with intense contemplation of the process of mentality and materiality in each step until dawn of the following day but he had still but he still had not yet attained to arahatship and arahatship is a fully enlightened being Like a perfect being. They can't lie. And they can't actually perform any unwholesome karma. Then the venerable Ananda thought, I have done my utmost. Lord Buddha has said, Ananda, you possess full perfections, paramis. Do proceed with the practice of meditation. You will surely attain arahanship one day. I have tried my best so much so that I can be counted as one of those who have done their best in meditation. What may be the reason for my failure? Then he remembered, Ah, I have been overzealous in keeping solely to the practice of walking throughout the night. There is an, there is an excess of energy and not enough concentration which indeed is responsible for this state of restlessness. It is now necessary to stop walking practice, so as to bring energy in balance with concentration and to proceed with the contemplation in a lying position. The Venerable Ananda then entered his room, sat down on his bed and began to lie down. It is said that he attained arahatship at the very moment of lying down, or rather at the moment of contemplating as lying, 
flying. Another text we hear that it was at the moment when Anand, the venerable Ananda's head touched to the pillow and right there he snapped out of his restlessness and became an, a fully enlightened being, an Arhant. This manner of attaining Arahatship has been recorded as a strange event in the commentaries because it is outside of the four regular postures of standing, sitting, lying and walking. At the moment of his enlightenment, the venerable Ananda could not be regarded as strictly in the standing posture because his feet were off the floor, nor could he be regarded as sitting because his body was already at an angle, uh, being quite close to the pillow, nor could he be regarded as lying down since his head had not yet touched the pillow and his body was not yet flat. Oh, this is amazing. So, in this uh, talk we hear that it was actually before his head touched the pillow <laughs> so he was <laughs> so he was lying down like he, he was sitting like this and then he was gonna like try to lie down you know put his head on the pillow and so, <laughs> so he became enlightened like in this position and now no one knows what to make of that <laughs> And the venerable Ananda was the attendant of the Buddha. So we always had to look out for the Buddha and make sure that um, anyone who came to ask the Buddha a question would um, be led to the Buddha. And so, yeah. Sometimes I think Ananda didn't have much time for himself to meditate. But let's get on with the text. That was so funny. The Venerable Ananda was a stream enterer, and he thus had to develop the three other higher stages, the path and fruit of once returning, the path and fruit of none returning, and the path and fruit of arahatship in his final attainment. This took only a moment. Extreme care is therefore needed to carry on the practice of contemplation, without relaxation or omission. In the act of lying down, contemplation should therefore be carried out with due care. When a meditator feels sleepy and wants to lie down, a note should be made as sleepy, sleepy, or wanting, wanting, on raising the hand as raising, raising, on stretching as stretching, stretching, on touching as touching, touching, on pressing as pressing, pressing, after swaying the body and dropping it down as lying, lying. The act of lying down itself should be carried out very slowly. On touching the pillow, it should be noted as touching, touching. There are many places of touch all over the body, but each spot needs to be noted only one at a time. In the lying posture, there are also many movements of the body in bringing one's arms and legs into position. These actions should be noted carefully as raising, stretching, bending, moving and so forth. On turning the body a note should be made as turning, turning. And when there is nothing in particular to be noted the meditator should proceed with the usual practice of noting rising and falling. While one is lying down on one's back or side, there is usually nothing in particular to be noted, and the usual exercise of rising and falling 
should be carried out. There may be times when the mind wanders while one is in the lying posture. This wandering mind should be noted as going, going. And when it goes out as arriving, arriving. And when it reaches a place as planning, reflecting, and so forth for each state in the same manner as in the contemplation while in the sitting posture. Mental states pass away on being noted once or twice. The usual exercise of noting rising and falling should be continued. There may also be instances of swallowing or spitting saliva, painful sensations, hot sensations, itching sensations, and etc. Or of bodily actions in changing positions or in moving the limbs. They should be contemplated as each occurs with sufficient strength in, con in concentration when sufficient strength in concentration is gained, it will be possible to carry on with the contemplation of each act of opening and closing the eyelids and blinking. Afterwards, one should then return to the usual exercise when there is nothing else to be noted. And sleep. I think we can just maybe we can get sleep and walking waking okay so let's try and get through this sleep and waking and then for the next video we will have washing and eating okay I'm gonna have to see if I can make these two I think I can so eight minutes left sleep though it is late at night and time for sleep. It is not advisable to give up the contemplation and go to sleep. Anyone who has a keen interest in contemplation must be prepared to face the risk of spending many nights without sleep. The scriptures are emphatic on the necessity of developing the qualities of four-factored energy. Chaturanga Virya In the practice of meditation in the heart struggle, one may be reduced to a mere skeleton of skin, bones, and sinews when one's flesh and blood wither and dry up, but one will not give up one's effort so long as one has not attained whatever is attainable by manly perseverance, energy, and endeavor. These Instruction should be followed with a strong determination. It may, be pos it may be possible to keep awake if there is enough concentration to beat off sleep, but one will fall asleep if sleep gets the upper hand. When one feels sleepy, one should make a note of it as sleepy, sleepy. When the eyelids are heavy as heavy, heavy, and when the eyes are felt to be dazzled as dazzled, dazzled, after contemplating in the manner indicated, one may be able to shake off sleepiness and feel fresh again. This feeling should be noted as feeling fresh, feeling fresh after which the usual exercise of noting rising and falling should be continued. However, in spite of this determination, one may feel unable to keep awake if one is very sleepy. In a lying posture, it is easier to fall asleep. A beginner should therefore try to keep mostly to the postures of sitting and walking. 
When the night is advanced, however, a meditator may be compelled to lie down and proceed with the contemplation of rising and falling. In this position, he may perhaps fall asleep. While one is asleep, it is not possible to carry on with the work of contemplation. It is an interval for a meditator to relax. Uh, an hour's sleep will give him an hour's relaxation. And if, if he continues to sleep for two, three or four hours, he will be relaxed for that much longer. But it is not advisable for a meditator to sleep more than four hours, which is ample enough for a normal sleep. And waking. A meditator should begin his contemplation from the moment of awakening. To be fully occupied with intense contemplation throughout his waking hours is the routine of a meditator who works hard with true aspiration for the attainment of the path and fruit. If it is not possible to catch the moment of awakening, he should begin with the usual exercise of noting rising and falling. If he be if he first becomes aware of the effect of reflecting, he should begin his contemplation by noting reflecting, reflecting, and then revert to the usual exercise of noting rising and falling. If he first becomes aware of hearing a voice of some other or some other sound, he should begin by noting hearing, hearing, and then revert to the usual exercise. On awakening, there may be bodily movements in turning to this side or that side, moving the hands or legs, and so forth. These actions should be contemplated in successive order. If he first becomes aware of the mental states leading to the various actions of the body, he should begin his contemplation by noting the mind. If he first becomes aware of painful sensations, he should begin with the noting of these painful sensations and then proceed with the noting of bodily actions. If he remains quiet without moving, the usual exercise of noting rising, falling should be continued. If he intends to get up, he should note this as intending, intending and then proceed with the noting of all actions in serial order in bringing the hands and legs into position. One should note rising, rising, on rise, raising, raising, on raising the body, sitting, sitting, when the body is erect and in a sitting posture. And one should also note any other actions of bringing the legs and hands into position. If there is then nothing in particular to be noted, the usual exercise of noting rising and falling should be reverted to. And thus far, we have mentioned things relating to the objects of contemplation in connection with the four postures and changing from one posture to another. This is merely a description of, general, of the general outline of major objects of contemplation to be carried out in the course of practice. Yet, in the beginning of the practice, it is difficult to follow up on all of them in the course of contemplation. Many things will be omitted, but on gaining sufficient strength in concentration, it is easy to follow up in the course of contemplation, not only those objects already enumerated, but many, but many, many more, many, many more. With the gradual development of mindfulness and concentration, the pace of knowledge quickens and thus many more objects can be perceived. It is necessary to work up to this high level. And that concludes on waking. So with one minute remaining in this video, we just went through um, the chapter on other exercises and we went through walking to sitting to lying down and then to sleep and then to waking. And so today we learned how to walk and sit and 
sleep and wake. And also how to lie down. And for the next um, chapter we're going to be looking at washing and eating. And then there will be a summary of the text and then we're, we're going to hear about the author. And so thank you so much for listening today and I hope it was very beneficial and just with 10 seconds left Namo Buddhasa and all the best to you. I'll just